ladies and gentlemen. Sit down. Sit down. Why do you look serious? You can't even say good evening. Oh, what's happening? Huh? <laughs> you are tired. Why? We are working. Aren't we? <laughs> well, good evening, <clears throat> colleagues, members of the media present here, fellow South Africans. <clears throat> I address you after weeks of speculation about my future as President of the Republic of South Africa. In particular, I make reference to the much publicized and awaited decision of the African National Congress issued on the 13th February 2018. It is now public knowledge that the National Executive Committee of the ANC resolved to recall me as the President of the Republic. I have also learned that before I respond to the initial decision, a new decision has been made by the ANC, <clears throat> whose effect is that I have now been compelled to resign by way of a motion of no confidence set down for tomorrow, 15 February 2018. The ANC is indeed the party of whose nomination, <clears throat> on whose nomination I became a candidate for the presidency of the Republic of South Africa after its victory of the national elections of 2014. It was on the ANC's nomination that I was later elected by the majority in the National Assembly as the President of the Republic. I am forever indebted to the ANC, the Liberation Movement. I've served almost all my life. I respect each member and leader of this glorious movement. I respect its gallant fight against <clears throat> centuries of white minority brutality whose <clears throat> relics remain today and continue to be entrenched in all, in all manner of sophisticated ways in order to ensure the continued survival of white privilege. I do take seriously <clears throat> and am grateful to the ANC that in the face of its revolutionary mission to ensure a better life for all and the creation of a non-racial, non-sexist and democratic South Africa, it deployed me at the pinnacle of its role in government. <clears throat> I was also elected in terms of Section 86 of the Constitution, and from that moment, 
pledged my loyalty to the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. It has indeed been a great learning experience, a mammoth task. <clears throat> the performance of which can never be done without difficulty and learning on the way. None of us, no matter how perfect, can claim that the building of a new society and the marshalling of a former liberation movement into a modern political party all happen in a straight line. It has detours, human error, and boulders strewn along the path. Because the struggle and politics are human activities, their pursuit is not <clears throat> without the taints of human nature. All my life, I have served and will continue to serve the ANC in its pursuit of the objectives of the National Democratic Revolution. I have served in my capacity as President of the Republic of South Africa within the prism of our much acclaimed constitution whose foundational values are fully subscribed to. I understand fully that while I serve <clears throat> at the pleasure of my party, the ANC, the door through which I officially came to serve the people of South Africa is the National Assembly, without which no political party can impose its candidate on the electorate, no matter how popular. This constitutional line between party and state is often forgotten in the usual business of party political contestations. As we fight our own battles in the corridors of political power and sometimes serving the very interests of the <clears throat> oppressors of yesterday who joyfully celebrate as we lynch one another, we often forget the citizens on whose behalf we create a better life. We tend to place the political party above the supreme law of the country, which is the rule book of the country's political engagement. I do not make this reference because I am above <clears throat> reproach, nor do I wish to proclaim that in understanding my political responsibilities, I have been the epitome of perfection. If truth be told, none of us are. However, I respect the prescripts of 
the Constitution and its consequences, how we enter, stay, stay in, and exit political office and government. There has been much speculation about how the President of the Republic should exit his or her office. In my case, some have even dared to suggest that one's PACs and post-service benefits should determine how one chooses to vacate political office. Often these concerns about PACs and benefits are raised by the very same people seeking to speak as paragons of virtue and all things constitutionally. Some even suggest that the relevant constitutional provisions, section 89 and 102, in terms of which the president should be removed from office would constitute an embarrassment or humiliation. For that reason, various suggestions are made to help leaders avoid this constitutional route of vacating political office without PACs. If we avail ourselves to serve in terms of the Constitution, we should be prepared if indeed, if indeed be and if those we serve deem it appropriate to suffer the hardship that comes with our constitutional obligations. Whether we lose our post political office benefits should not determine how we act in the time of our departure. Nor did I agree to serve because there are no better cadres in the ANC and the country. Most importantly, I did not agree to serve in order to exit with PACs and benefits of the office of the president. It is my party that placed me before the representatives of the people in the National Assembly to be elected. It is my party that availed me to serve on the basis of the Constitution as the supreme law of the land. Make no mistake, no leader should stay beyond the time determined by the people they serve. Most importantly, no leader should seek an easy way out simply because they could not face life at the end of their term without the perks that come with their political office. I do not fear exiting political office. However, I have only asked my party to articulate my transactions, transgressions, and 
the reason for its immediate instruction that I vacate office. This was important in view of the discussions I held with the President of the ANC and the Secretary General of the party that were aimed at uniting our organization, the ANC. It is indeed true that there was an agreement that even if the need arises that I should vacate the office before the end of term, there is a need to have a period of transition during which I would delegate some of the functions to the Deputy President of the Republic. Of course, I must accept that if my party and my compatriots wish that I be removed from office, they must exercise that right and do so in the manner prescribed by the Constitution. I fear no motion of no confidence or impeachment, for they are the lawful mechanisms for the people of this beautiful country to remove their president. I've served the people of South Africa to the best of my ability. I am forever grateful that they trusted me with their highest office in the land. But when I accepted the deployment, I understood <clears throat> and undertook to subject myself to the supreme law of the land, the Constitution. Itanda ugu shoguti kwizinkalo ngezinkalo lapho abantu bakithi bekhona ngokuzithoba okungenamkhawulo kusemqoka ukunazisa ukuthi angidaze nkani okweselesele kunjalo nje angekwaye kwehla esikhundleni sobumongameli waleli lengabathi angingenanga emzaba lazweni ngoba ngigaqile izikhundla yinye nje into engicelayo kini sizwe sakithi Uguti noko angipume ngomkudu womthetho womthetho sisekelo okuyiwona engabe kwangawo angikwe sabi ukulahlekelwa amalungelo no point Oza Nesikunda Subumonga Mail Anginganelanga Lezozi in To Kuhulmain Kunja Lonje Aziti Shu Lapagim Ifuna Kupela 
ubulungiswa nokuhlonishwa komthetho komthetho sesekelo kanye namalungelo ami uma kwenzeke njalo ngiyophuma ngokuzithoba nokuhlonipha Yakolelwa ukuthi ngiwenzile owami umsebenzi enani ngibekele wona uma kukhona la ngingenzanga kahle khona bakwethu akukho soga lingena sici I also thank the citizens of South Africa for the privilege of serving as the President of the Republic since 2009. It has been an honor that I will cherish as long as I live. I wish to thank members of cabinet, deputy ministers, and the whole of government, national, provincial, and local, for the positive spirit and cooperative manner in which we all worked. I also thank the other arms of state for the work we have accomplished. I thank all political parties who are in parliament for their contributions in making our democracy strong. I thank all stakeholders, business, labor, religious leaders, traditional leaders, youth, women's groups, the education sector, and all others we have worked with over the years, united by the goal of moving South Africa forward. I thank the international community for the cooperation in the work we have been doing together. I've also been disturbed by the instances of violence that have occurred because of the different views among members of our organization outside our headquarters, Lutuli House. No life should be lost in my name and also the ANC should never be divided in my name. I have therefore come to the decision to resign as President of the Republic with immediate effect. Even though I disagree with the decision of, my, of the leadership, of my organization, I have always been a disciplined member of the ANC. As I leave, I will continue to serve the people of South Africa as well as the ANC, the organization I have served my, all of my life in it. I will dedicate all my energy to work towards the attainment of the policies of our organization, in particular, the radical economic transformation agenda. Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, 
I thank you very much for your attention. Gabong, Gyalibuk. Paya Dangi. Thank you. We'll meet someone. Well, there you have it, uh, the president of uh, South Africa, President Jacob Zuma, has officially resigned. All right, Colin Maine, I know that uh, you don't have too much time with us. Uh, your reaction, and I suppose that this is uh, what you expected from a loyal and long-serving member of the ANC. Well, we want to thank uh, President Jacob Zuma for the right decision, as painful as you said. And uh, we have heard him, he outlined what he has done. And uh, we appreciate that uh, he said himself that in the journey of saving, none of us can claim to be perfect in all the things he said. But uh, overall, he has acted like a cadre of the organization and we will always remember and respect him for that. I mean, it, 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 uh, you could see he was getting emotional at one stage. And I think it, it's, it's not easy to stand up. Um, when all you have ever known your whole life from he said 17 years old was the ANC and being in the movement and but he's not going anywhere I mean that's one thing he has said he will remain a part of the ANC and uh, do whatever they ask of him but you know to depart this way must be difficult yes uh, as, as you are saying uh, the, the president is paining and most of the members of the organization but uh, what we respect him for is that he's not mobilizing people to leave the ANC. Uh, he, he continues to respect and he said himself that he'll continue to serve the movement and our people mm -hmm. in different capacities. So we will be waiting to join him as we respect him as a cadre mm -hmm. of our organization. Uh, we plead to all South Africans and, and to all young uh, members of the ANC to respect his decision to step down but also to stay put in the African National Congress. Mm -hmm. The ANC remains the only hope for all of us in South Africa. And the ANC must continue to lead South Africa, irrespective of who is at the helm. Mm -hmm. Because leaders in the movement come and go. Uh, the President Zuma had his, had his time to serve his served. As he said, he was not perfect. Let's give Comrade uh, Ramaphosa an opportunity uh, to serve. And, and, and we'll judge him from there. What would you think, what would you say is the biggest lesson you personally learned spending time with Jacob Zuma and that you will be grateful for or take with you? Um, president Zuma loves his people. Um, since I was elected as a president of the Youth League, and actually before then, when I was MSC still in the province, Every year he hosts big events in Uganda to give to the needy food puzzles. There's a, Zuma, there's a, there's a Jacob Zuma Foundation where um, uh, he, he helps young people, helps young people to go to school and all of that. So he's passionate about education. He may not be educated, but he loves education and encourages people to go to school. And, but most importantly, he's a man of the people. He loves Uganda every time him where would you want to go after the term of office he would not say I want to stay somewhere in Pretoria I say mm -hmm. he wants to be with his people in Gandla and uh, he the only thing he knows is the ANC mm -hmm. we respect him for that Colin thank you for your time I know that you yeah. um, spent a long time with us thank you for your immediate reaction and uh, for uh, talking to us here during the special broadcast on SABC 2 and channel 404 the ANC Youth League president of course uh, thanking the president for doing the right thing I suppose and uh, has resigned but we've also still got Dr. Somadara Fikeni who is with us yeah, but just and before that we'd just like to say to our viewers and SABC 2 if you're watching 
Uh, thanks very much for tuning in. I'm sure that uh, you'll busy be uh, talking uh, amongst yourselves about uh, the end of an era. Uh, when you wake up tomorrow morning, uh, a new path will be taken by the uh, governing party and uh, most likely very soon uh, you'll have a new president in this country as we say goodbye to the old one. And this is where we say goodbye to you as well. Good Thank night. You. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Right, as you were saying, uh, we do have uh, Professor Somado de Fikeni, who's in Pretoria. Um, Prof, it was an emotional speech. Uh, he, I, I, I got that sense straight from the off. I didn't quite get some of the things that he was talking about, especially when he was talking about the perks and I'm not afraid and the constitution, etc., etc. And so we weren't sure during the speech, was he going to stay, was he going to resign? But in the end, um, he choked up and said goodbye. Well, I do think that if you look at the pattern of President Zuma, the master chess uh, player who has translated that into the political sphere, he often, whether it's legal battles or other things, wait until the very end before he shows his hand. So in this speech, it was precisely that point where you thought he was building an argument to say, let it go to the wire. But on the issue of the PECs, he seemed to spend a disproportionate amount of time on the PECs. And this, to me, didn't make any logical sense without any context being provided though he spent most of the time perhaps was trying to say i am not fearful of what the future might be i am not fearful of what might be thrown at me but uh, even those who might have been assisting him to craft the speech it just didn't make sense as to why he spent so much time on this point Let's just show you, um, um, Professor Fakeni, we're going we're to carry on the conversation with you, but we just want to also show viewers at home what we are seeing um, on our cameras there at Lutuli House. Uh, just a couple of minutes ago, we saw, or a couple of seconds actually, um, the Secretary General, Ace Mahashule, he was sitting there. Looks like he's also about to uh, brief the media, but there is Jessie Duarte, and uh, she's... Uh, <laughs> Shaking her head, obviously somebody is talking to her. Here we go, let's see. Uh, we're going to take this live um, as soon as we get the SG uh, onto the podium and find out what is going to be said now. Alden, you're good to go. Oh, okay. Tula are you fine? Uh, evening once more, uh, colleagues. This has been a very long day for all of us. Uh, we felt that uh, to avoid many other speculations and people speaking on our behalf that we should come and brief you in this way and uh, we really appreciate the patience that you have exercised throughout the day the deputy secretary general is going to read a statement detailing the anc's reaction uh, to the statement by the president thank you very much um, thank you very much for waiting uh, along with us it's been a long night um, a few minutes ago, Comrade Jacob Zuma announced to the nation that he is resigning as the President of the Republic of South Africa. This decision by President Zuma is consistent with what we had said earlier today, that he has never and will never defy his organization. The African National Congress, President Zuma remains a principled member of the ANC. In giving effect to the decision of the ANC-NEC to recall him, President Zuma has reaffirmed his commitment to the principles, practices, and character of the movement to which he has dedicated his life. Having taken the difficult decision to recall Comrade Jacob Zuma, the African National Congress nonetheless wants to salute the outstanding contribution he has made and expressed its profound gratitude to him for the role he has played in the ANC spanning over 60 years of loyal service. Whilst this may mark an end of his term of office as President of the Republic, we hope and believe Comrade Zuma will continue to work with the ANC as we undertake our program of fundamental organizational renewal and uniting all South Africans 
behind a shared vision of transformation and economic recovery. Comrade Zuma is the last in our line of presidents to have worked closely with the longest serving president of the ANC, Comrade Oliver Tambo. He was trusted by Comrade O.R. and the ANC to set up underground structures of the movement. He also played a pivotal role in the peaceful negotiation of our transition from apartheid to democracy. In our democratic dis dispensation, President Zuma rose through the ranks, first serving government as a provincial member of the uh, any of the of KwaZulu Natal before assuming his role as deputy president and ultimately president of the republic. While we acknowledge mistakes that may have been committed, President Zuma leaves a legacy of delivery in many critical areas, among them being the conceptualization and delivery of the National Development Plan, a long-term plan towards our common prosperity and a first in our country. President Zuma's passion for rural development saw his administration establish a dedicated ministry on rural development to further advance the ANC's program of land and agrarian reform. South Africa's mass rollout of an anti-retroviral program, which remains the largest and most comprehensive in the world, as well as initial steps to roll out the national health insurance to create an equitable health system was undertaken during his tenure. These efforts have contributed significantly to an increase in the life expectancy of South Africans. It is also under his stewardship that our country witnessed significant success recorded in education and the expansion of access to basic and higher education for the poorest of the poor. Year-on-year -year increases on the matric pass rate and the progressive implementation of fee-free higher education for the poor and working class. President Zuma's led government has also rolled out a massive infrastructure investment program, which helped sustain growth during an economic downturn, providing vital economic and social infrastructure. These are but some of the many achievements and strides made under the leadership of President Zuma. The ANC extends its gratitude to President Zuma for having served the country in this capacity for the last nine years, particularly for the contribution he has made to progress, in, to progress in improving the lives of ordinary South Africans. While we accept the resignation of President Zuma, we reiterate that our decision to impose a recall was taken only after exhaustive discussions on the impact such a recall would have on the country and the ANC and the functioning of government. This decision provides certainty to the people of South Africa at a time when economic and social challenges facing the country require urgent and resolute response by all sections of society. The ANC now expects all our deployed members of parliament to cast their vote for the ANC president, Comrade Cyril Ramaphosa, as the candidate the ANC will nominate for president when parliament convenes to elect a president of the republic. It is critical that South Africans are now united around the task of growth, job creation, and economic transformation. Finally, the ANC has received news of the passing of the leader of the MDC of Zimbabwe, Mr. Morgan Shengarai. The ANC expresses its condolences to the family of Mr. Shengarai and all supporters of the MDC. I thank you very much. Thanks. Uh... All right, so uh, we there hearing from uh, Jesse Duarte. Uh, looking very emotional, Peter, both of you, you and I, yeah, both seeing yeah. that. Look, on... it, it was, you know, y we know uh, President Jacob Zuma as the jovial um, life of the party. And in fact, the way he started it, remember, he says, you guys are so tired. We're working. And yeah. he was joking right at the beginning. But you could see, in fact, let's go back to uh, the uh, uh, Lutuli House and hear what uh, the Aldrin questions have been taken. A quick one, Tula Sizu Severana from ENCA. Uh, throughout the afternoon and the evening, uh, the outgoing president, Jacob Zuma, has been raising issues that you as the ANC 
All right, it seems like uh, there's some uh, questions coming from the floor. We're just uh, crisscrossing between here, of course, and uh, what's, what's happening at the moment. So right now, journalists asking questions, uh, writing them down. It's, I uh, can't really hear what they're asking, but hopefully when the answers come, <laughs> we'll get more of an understanding. But let me, let me try to keep quiet so we can actually <laughs> hear. Let's try and hear what's being asked. Yeah, for those who still asking, what did this man do that's different uh, from what has been happening in the last nine years? Yes. Um, uh, um, Alvin Simpia from SMBC TV News. Um, Mr. Jesse, we have been here about what, 10 years ago with, um, with the recall of uh, former President Tabo Mbeki. And it had great repercussions. And um, if you listen back to President Jacob Zuma's previous speeches, that has been his greatest fear um, that there has been so many breakaway parties from the ANC. Um, as a party, what steps do you think you can take to ensure that President Jacob Zuma or those who support him do not leave the African National Congress, especially heading into the elections? Is this something that you have been considering? Have you ever speak to President Jacob Zuma that he should also then appeal to his supporters not to leave the party? Okay, dear Chief. I think that President Zuma is within his rights to request uh, reasons or what we believe his transgressions are. And if I'm not wrong, uh, in the earlier interview he did in, in the evening, he requested that there be an ongoing discussion with him about that. I certainly think that the ANC leadership will make the effort to sit down with Comrade Zuma and discuss in detail what might have been issues that brought us to the point where we were uh, when the NEC met. However, having said that, it is important for us to say to you that a critical consideration for, for all of us to remember is that we've been through weeks and months of haranguing of our President Zuma. Um, by the media, by the opposition. And that shouldn't be the reason why one recalls a, a, a deployee. However, it's been going on for almost um, solidly uh, three to four years. And we believe that we do need to give this comrade respect and also spare him the humiliation of the ongoing votes of no confidence that come to parliament. Uh, spurred on by almost a campaign atmosphere uh, uh, to La Cisue, uh, especially from some media houses. We have to say that. So yes, we will sit down with him first and discuss what we believe might be the issues before we venture into a um, slaughterhouse of opinion uh, against him yet again by by yourselves, if I may, may say so, and, and the opposition. Having said that, I also wish to make the point that we're not naive about the intentions of the opposition in this country. So we're not celebrating the fact that we had to recall a cadre of the movement that has served this organization for over 60 years. It's not a small matter. And we're not celebrating tonight that he has considered all the issues and has decided to resign. So we're not celebrating that. What we need to do is to move forward. And we know that as we go back to parliament, the opposition will nominate their own candidates and vote for their own candidates and vote against the candidate of the ANC. We're very well aware of that. So the intentions of the opposition are not our primary concern. Their intentions are not intentions that should concern us too much. But uh, you know, I think much is being made about, about from, from everywhere. What did I do wrong? We will answer that question to him. Certainly not make it a public venture one more time. It's correct. Secondly. The repercussions, uh, yes, of course. Uh, whenever, an, whenever a figure 
um, as solidly entrenched in the ANC as Comrade Zuma is, there will be voices that will cry out aloud. Why did you do this? What is going to happen now? Um, I think, yes, we have, and we are dealing with it. We're sending out all our NEC members this weekend to 54 regions of the country to go and explain to the ANC membership what the, why the NEC took the decision that they took. That's the first step that we will take. Beyond that step, Comrade Zuma himself will work with us to ensure that people do not leave the ANC, which he has worked extremely hard over the years to build, and which he worked extremely hard after, our, uh, after we were unbanned by the apartheid regime, to ensure that peace was in fact the dividend of the negotiations. And I think we need to give him that. As we move forward, we know that he has agreed to do so, and that he will work with us, um, which was somewhat different uh, 10 years ago, uh, Eldrin. I think there was a, a different atmosphere. We trust and hope that all those people who find this a very painful moment, and I can assure you it is painful, um, very, very painful, um, will work with the ANC and not walk away from it. Um, and, you know, I think if you believe in the, in the values of the ANC, you don't walk away uh, from it because an individual is no longer there because none of us are members of anyone else. We are members of the organization. So hopefully, that's the way in which we will go. Okay. Any other questions? Sorry, um, DSG, um, mm. I have to apologize firstly, but it almost sounds that there is some double speak that's happening with regards to what, what it is that President Jacob Zuma has done wrong. Mm -hmm. And one would then get to understand why he feels so aggrieved, because mm. Now you have the party standing here, and the party still can't say why it is that he has been recalled. Mm -hmm. um, how do you explain to someone after they've been recalled why it is that they've been recalled? And what message are you going to be giving to the ANC branches when you've already recalled this person, mm -hmm. yet you haven't told him exactly what the reasons are for his recall? He's asked for reasons, um, which we feel we, we, perhaps we should give to him. The NEC had a, a very long discussion. Reasons were forwarded in that discussion. Um, we should give him those reasons that were forwarded by a number of NEC members who spoke. Um, and perhaps that's really not something we should, and I'll say it again, I think that really in the interest of our organization, and in the best interest of Comrade Zuma, the best place to advance and give that report is to him directly, not to the media. I'd like to say this, and I do not mean to offend you, and it's not an offensive statement. We are not living in a country where our media is known for being sensitive and known for caring about the feelings of people and their families. And for that reason, I, I'm not going to give you any reasons that were advanced by the NEC. I'm not going to do so. Um, I think it would be wrong to do so. I think it would be adventurous to do so and populist, to say the least. And I don't, I don't think we want to do that. I guess the next step is obviously um, um, electing the new president and the yes. new president gets sworn in. Has there been any discussion around um, the cabinet? What happens to the cabinet? Will there be a cabinet reshuffle? And who then steps in as the deputy president? None of that discussion has been held with the ANC at all. Remember that uh, President Zuma's resignation is now 17 minutes old. <laughs> And it would not be possible to have had that discussion within that time frame. No, uh, none of that discussion has been held with the ANC at all. Just a quick point of clarity, the SG. There are some questions about where the SG of the organization is at the moment. 
The SG of the organization had to go to Paris today. As you know that he um, and the TG of the organization were given until the end of March to conclude their work in, um, in their various provinces. And he had to do some of that work today and that's exactly where he is. He's not absconding. He is in fact working quite hard. He, he's been talking to us on the phone. He's also been in touch on the phone with President Zuma. So he's, uh, he, is in, he is connected to the issues very much so. Okay. Thank you very much. No, thanks, uh, colleagues. This brings us to the end of uh, this shot. It's been a very long <laughs> All right, there you go. That's uh, the uh, post-press conference that uh, just took place there. And uh, we heard from uh, Jesse Duarte as, uh, uh, you know, uh, answering questions. And also a question that both you and I were uh, asking. You know, where was the Secretary General? Yeah. Where is he? Well, she says he's doing work in Paris in the Free State and that uh, NEC members have been deployed to explain this decision. Okay. So perhaps that meant that he knew before. Yeah. We don't know. Well, of course. I mean, yeah. you know, there was a press statement read by the ANC. They must know. They, mm. they obviously must be privy to the information. And uh, I mean, All it was right. almost immediately that Jesse had uh, okay. got that. I mean, we've got uh, Professor Somadora Fekeni. Let's ask okay. him. I mean, uh, what did you make? I mean, not that I'm downplaying what uh, Jesse Duarte said, because we're going to get into that. But just the fact that the Secretary General of the ANC was not conducting this particular media conference, wasn't there for perhaps the biggest one of the biggest moments in the party's uh, time over the last couple of years, uh, and he was absent. Well, I do think that the explanation that they give suffices. Of course, it would not have been very easy for Ace Mahashule to be present to give this particular account for the organization. But also remember that the ANC had indicated that they are dispatching its NEC members to the regions, to the provinces, to explain their decision to recall the president of the country. And also the fact that Ace Mahashule, the deputy president of the ANC, uh, as well as, uh, you know, uh, the treasurer general, I mean, of the ANC, they are still engaged in their previous roles as MECs and, uh, you know, as also the chairpersons of the, I mean, as the premiers of their various provinces. So that particular explanation suffices. Ace Mahashule equipped himself very well when he gave the other press conference where he seemed to be more forthright than he traditionally was since he took over. All right, so uh, perhaps finally, I guess uh, the president has saved the ANC's blushes right at the end. Uh, and uh, what next for the party? Now they don't have to go through this motion of no confidence. Uh, is it all's well that ends well in this instance? I do think that uh, it has saved the ANC the embarrassment and uh, the humiliation of having to ride on the EFF vote of no confidence and also members of the ANC raising hands to vote against their president. And more so, if the president had gone to parliament, he would have made history of having been booted out in parliament twice. Because in 2005, you remember, that announcement was made in parliament and this was going to happen in parliament again. From this point onwards, I think ANC will have to engage with President Zuma because if he start giving interviews, also expressing his grievance beyond this particular point, right. then it would create difficulties. But also they have to explain all these contradictions of the statement he gave earlier and now. Okay, Prof, we're going to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I know it's been a long long day for you but uh, if you could hold on for another few minutes uh, to get some comment because we're going to go to uh, uh, Melville yeah. where there's a lot of activity playing uh, playing out there and uh, our reporter and Tlantla 
uh, 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 is out there. Uh, uh, Tlantla, what's the mood like in Melville? Yes, well, good evening, Peter. Uh, talking to you right here from Melville. Uh, we've been here for like an hour and a half, uh, talking to a couple of people here, you know. Since, the, since President Jacob Zuma uh, said that he's stepping down, we have seen people celebrating. I mean, earlier on, there were ladies on my left-hand side who immediately, when they heard the news, they started screaming all over. But to talk to us in terms of how they feel, it's Oscar here. Oscar, I mean, we had an engagement earlier, and you s told me how you felt. Uh, just talk to our viewers with regards to how you feel after the president has finally stepped down. Look, Tantra, uh, so much of a relief that uh, the president had to take a decision to step down. It was really a mess up for our country. And then uh, I'm really glad that he had to take that decision. It takes so much guts. Uh, we suffered a lot as a country and we were to still struggle if then he did not step down. Uh, from the entering of his presidency to me, personally, I never supported it. So from what he has done to damage the country, it's really not on for us. Well, Peter, just to take it a little bit further, to, uh, there are a couple of gentlemen here. They wanted to talk to us. Um, your views about, you know, President Jacob Zuma uh, stepping down? It was one, one, one certainly for me. He did nothing for us. He did nothing for the country. What he did, like he was like one of the best, he step, was stepping down. What a relief for me. Thank you, Zuma, for stepping down. Uh, Lolo, you also just opine. Um, I mean, you said that this was not the first time, you know, you saw something like this happening. Yes. Your views. Uh, the thing is, things like this, they happen all the time, and we st the there's still no change. The only thing that we're hoping for is change. But the, it looks like the nation, like South Africans, were getting angry. And we cannot be an angry nation. We need to, un to be united. My, my problem is we're going to be led by a divided uh, like, uh, leadership. So that's going to be the problem. I believe that Uzuma did what he did because he believed he had to step down because Abandu are getting angry each and every day. But your views in terms, did you want him to step down or to continue? <laughs> okay, let's take it to Mama. Mama, your views about you know the president announcing today that um, he's stepping down. I would say this is real good riddance, best news ever, and maybe the corruption will now stop in South Africa, and our youth will get jobs. Most of our youngsters are unemployed, and we will see. A you true democratic South Africa and hopefully our new president Cyril Ramaphosa will deliver the, what the ANC promised in the past. Well Peter just one last person that I want you to talk that I want us to talk to is Lebu. She's sitting right there. She, she's been pestering me want, wanting to talk to us about her views. I'm just gonna walk to her right now to just get you know her views. Lebu, your views about the president stepping down. Um, it's a very welcomed um, stepping down. We love him to bits, but um, to a certain extent, he has failed us, right? Um, in terms of the focus on the people. He forgot why he was there and actually looking after them, right? Um, it was about self-governing and, 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 and. Um, self-enriching. So for me, Great that he has stepped down, but then I question the next level that we're going into, right? Um, so Cyril, we're watching you, and we hope that you've got the people's interests at heart at the end of the day. One last question I have for you is that, I mean, earlier the president spoke to the SABC and said to, to South Africans that he was not defying the ANC. And I mean, we had a, an engagement, a brief engagement earlier. What's your view with regards to that? You know, I mean, now he has resigned. Um, it's not, he's the president of the country, not the ANC at the end of the day. Right, so as a ruling party, um, it's about understanding how does it benefit the whole country versus a party, right? So, love the ANC, but at the end of the day, how does it benefit the country? I'm patriotic, I love my country and I love my people. So can we not focus on enriching, but focus on 
how do we benefit everybody else? Well, there you go, Peter. Uh, I guess from now on, the eyes will be tomorrow in terms of what's going to happen in Parliament. I mean, if you know, with have uh, traveled across the province uh, this week, speaking to different people about their views and what they thought of uh, President Jacob Zuma and if they wanted him to resign or not. And we know that we've got different views, others saying that, you know what, uh, what happened before should not happen again, he should continue. While others share the very same sentiment with the people here that, you know, they wanted him gone. Now he has gone, they look very happy, as you can see behind me or next to me here, that people are very happy to receive the news that uh, President Jacob Zuma has stepped down. With regards to that, you know, it looks like, yeah, people are very happy here in Melville. And with that being said, it's back to you in studio. Thank you very, very much indeed. Yeah, let's continue cross crisscrossing. And let's not forget it is Valentine's night, yeah, you know, yes, because so right. the, you can see there's a lot of people there having a, a bottle of red wine and uh, <laughs> uh, now getting this news as well. So I suppose they want to speak more. Now we go to Pretoria and Sipo Stierman is uh, in the streets in Hatchfield. Sipo, uh, is it quiet where you are or talk to us? How's the atmosphere in Pretoria? Well, a very good evening to you, Leah, and our viewers at home. Well, it's never quiet in the streets of Hatfield. Uh, remember, this is where the University of Pretoria is, and a lot of young people uh, that are working in some of the government departments and other companies that are around here. So trust me, the streets are always busy until uh, late into the evening. And uh, as a result, uh, some of them uh, uh, that I have lined up that are going to be talking with me shortly uh, were telling me that they were watching the announcement on TV, and everybody was glued on their screens uh, watching as the president, uh, Jacob Zuma, resigned and um I've got some of the young people here with me. If you can just, ma'am, just uh, retell me that, that story that you were telling me, uh, narrating earlier on that, uh, you know, you were a group of people watching in a restaurant. Uh, how, how was that atmosphere there as the president announced uh, his resignation? We were all just so anticipated to finally hear those words that he uttered. We were all glued to the screen. Students were watching. Everyone was very excited. And the minute that we heard that he has resigned, everyone just started uh, singing. We, they were singing the national act anthem actually so it was very exciting the atmosphere was very live it was jumpy everyone was just very happy uh, wh why do you think that everybody seems to be celebrating uh, the exit of president zuma because it's just a new south africa i mean like that's why we actually sang the national anthem because everyone was just like new beginnings it's a it's been a long roller coaster a whole nine years of him being president and we're just so happy that new um leadership is taking up it's coming to south africa so that's that's why we were just very excited. All right, let's get your friend uh, also here coming closer. You were also there, you were also watching. Uh, you said that you're part of the people that celebrated. Why did you celebrate the resignation of President Zuma? Because honestly speaking, he's held this country so long for hostage. We held it, he held us so long for hostage and we just feel like we're finally free because he was treating this country like his own personal playground and we've had enough of that. You're a student. The president announced free education uh, on the 16th of December last year. Shouldn't you be happy about that? I'm very happy about that. But unfortunately, although he announced free education, it wasn't for all students. It was for specific students in a certain pay margin. So as much as I'm very happy, it would have been better if it was for all students because we are equal at the end of the day. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, let's get uh, you say over here. Uh, of course, you're not a student. Ordinary hardworking South African, I imagine. Uh, what's your reaction to President Zuma resigning? I think it's the best thing ever. Eh? I mean, on top of it, uh, leaders must come and go. If you're a good leader and people don't want you anymore, you must accept and actually give an opportunity for the other people, you know what I mean? All right. What is, uh, you know, one of the questions earlier that had been asked from the ANC that what has President Zuma done wrong? And he keeps asking this question, what have I done wrong? What do you think is done wrong? I think uh, that whole Gandla massacre thing, I think that's, that's what he's done wrong. How do you have a big um, building in, in your hometown while there's other people who are actually struggling to survive, you know? Yeah, so basically that's what I think, uh, yeah. All right, well, uh, we're getting excitement here. Yeah, I see there's another gentleman here. Do you want to give your, your opinion as well? Yes, come come Thank on board, you. yeah. Thank so you. what's your what's your reaction to the president uh, finally resigning? I think these are very exciting times for South Africa. Um, there's finally justice being served, and as young people, we can really say there's really hope again in South Africa and our, our legal system and I'm really excited and I think we're just really going to a better place 
All right, and what do you think about the incoming president? Do we know the ANC announced that uh, Cyril Ramaphosa is going to take over? Oh, man, I love Cyril Ramaphosa. All right. Not because I'm vendor, but he's also great, great leadership, <laughs> great leadership skills, and I feel like it's, he brings a different dynamic to the ANC. Oh, and uh, I didn't vote for the ANC, oh, but because now we've got Cyril Ramaphosa, I think as a young person, I'm really going to vote for the ANC again because I really believe in the ANC again. And uh, as I said, exciting times indeed. All right. Uh, well, there you have it. Uh, they're saying that it's exciting times uh, and that uh, they previously did not vote for the ANC. But now with uh, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa coming on board and being sworn in in parliament, then they might consider voting in for the ANC. It's quite interesting that, uh, you know, I spoke to a number of young people here. And despite President Zuma announcing that free education, uh, these young people here don't seem to be you know, very much uh, uh, you know, bothered or, or, or impressed by that, saying that uh, President Zuma has overstayed uh, his welcome. Uh, suddenly you get that feeling. One of the people I spoke to narrated that story where they were in a restaurant and that uh, as soon as uh, he said, uh, you know, I've decided to resign, they sang the national anthem, feeling that uh, it's a great moment for the country, a moment of renewal, as of course uh, President, uh, uh, well, ANC President at this point in time, Cyril Ramaphosa, has been uh, saying. So it's, uh, it's excitement right now here in the streets of Hartfield. It's uh, really becoming a bit difficult to get somebody who is not uh, excited with this decision, but uh, that is the situation right now. We will continue to get some more reactions and perhaps get some President Zuma sympathy. Us, but uh, suddenly it's not easy at this point in time. You get a sense that the country is all about moving on and starting afresh. I expect to you guys in studio. Sipo Sturman, thank you very much indeed, Sipo, reporting there from uh, downtown Pretoria. And uh, just a small sample and uh, young people and they got their yeah, opinion and they're absolutely. quite happy that uh, President Zuma has gone. Yeah. Uh, but let's not forget there are a lot of people that are not happy. And, and so. To not do. to get lost yeah. in just the images that we've seen tonight. Remember, I mean, the, the, the two places that we've been to are in cities. I mean, we, you know, in Pretoria mm. and in Johannesburg, and it's the youth. And, you know, these are a, a segment of, of, of South Africa yeah. that yeah. want change. They are they're a frustrated grouping. But these are cities. I mean, if you take those cameras out to KZN and Kandli and areas like that, I mean, I think you'll get a very different story. But that's what we're doing. Hopefully, we'll get to as many parts as we can. But let's continue with some political analysis here. We've got uh, Levy and Du with us. He's been, of course, eyeing these developments unfolding and he joins us live from our Pretoria studio. Levy, thanks. Hi, good to have you this evening. Good evening to you. Good evening to the viewers at home. Levy, so we have entered into another chapter in the history of South Africa. Um, I think many of us were listening to um, I suppose we can call him now former President Jacob Zuma's speech with much anticipation and that speech was going in one direction then it changed direction and we were guessing hang on he's going the vote of no confidence and then it did a full circle and came back and then he resigned how did you feel throughout it I mean did you did you think that all along he was going to resign or was he also throwing you off a bit Well, I think uh, he, 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 he took a lot of people by surprise. Um, uh, at some stage, when he started saying that I don't feel, I'm not scared of a motion of no confidence, I'm also not scared of impeachment. One actually thought that uh, apparently Jacob Zuma wants to up the, the, the fight. Uh, he's ready for a fight. But uh, ultimately ended up resigning. But also, another thing that I actually observed is that uh, the, the statement that he gave uh, in the afternoon is totally different from the statement that he actually gave now. Uh, but one area that uh, is quite similar to both the statements is that he still has an element of maintaining that he does not seem to understand why uh, the NEC has actually taken a decision to recall him. And I think that's one area that uh, uh, I see that is actually putting an emphasis on. But one other area for me is that President Zuma seemed to indeed understand very